Y'all ain't never heard of knocking for you, Henry. Well, I, actually, we had an invitation, didn't we? Yeah, how did you know? Yeah, yeah, it came in the shape of a bottle. We're from the Kingsman Tailor's Shop in London. Maybe you've heard of us. Oh, the Kingsman? Yeah. Huh. That's where y'all got them fine suits and them fancy spectacles y'all got on. Exactly. That's right. Y'all look damn sharp. Let me see if I got it right here. You want me to believe that it's normal for a tailor to hack through an advanced biometric security system with nothing but a little bitty old watch on? And that's a clip from Kingsman, The Golden Circle, and one of its stars is Taron Egerton. Hello, Taron, how are you? Hi, I'm very well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for having so, me on the show. Oh, it's, it's a pleasure to have you on. So one of its stars, I mean, the poster is... Uh, is fabulous. I mean, what a great yeah. cast you've got. I mean, it's very, very surreal. It's a sequel to the movie Kingsman, The Secret Service, which was my first ever film role. Um, <laughs> it's, I, amazing, it's, really. it's, it's very, very strange. And now to come back, um, kind of, you know, as you say, on the poster, flanked by this, well, frankly, an army of incredible uh, actors, you know, award winning actors. It's a dream come true. It's really great. I mean, I, re I remember when we reviewed. The first film, it, it is an astonishing story for you to say, and then you just said it again, that that was your first film. Mm. And they were right alongside some of the biggest movie stars in the world. Here we are, second time around. Did it feel as though things, I mean, you've done so many good things since, but did you think, okay, this is slightly different for the second one? Um, I think in the sense of the experience of making the movie and the work that goes into the action elements of it and knowing what it is tonally and knowing the relationship with the character uh, that Colin plays, all of that, you get a sense of what's expected of the sequel. But um, but this time it was a far, it's a more, I think it's a more ensemble piece. There's this you know great cast of actors and by no means did I feel um, like, you know, I was, I was pretty. It was, I found it very awe-inspiring. It felt awe-inspiring in a different way because we had this gang of yeah. incredible American stars and British stars. Because the Colin you referred to is, of course, Colin Firth. Yes. And uh, and I remember in the, when the first movie came out, you said that uh, he would text you and uh, he would sort of make sure everything was fine. You yeah, know, we and had and a all, good relationship and all, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So he doesn't need to look after you anymore. No, does he? no, <laughs> that's that's true. That's true. But it did have a lovely feeling of I've never done. Well, I mean, obviously, Kingsman was my first film. I've never had the experience of making a sequel before. But it's a lovely feeling of um, kind of well, family might be putting it a bit strongly. But, you know, familiar surroundings and people coming back together uh, after you know, what, what people, some people obviously thought was a job well done. Um, and it was particularly nice being reunited with Colin. One of the first places we shot was in Italy. And uh, I went for dinner with him and his sons, who I have gotten to know a little bit. And it was just a lovely, lovely feeling to have that validation and the excitement for the future. Mm. Just remind us who the Kingsmen are for, yes. for, for folk who, who missed the first one. So they're a secret organisation and of, they're tailors basically. They operate, their front <laughs> is a tailor's shop. They operate as a tailor's on Savile Row. But behind closed doors they are highly trained, um, tech savvy, elite crime fighters who have taken it upon themselves to tackle kind of global problems and global injustices. And they do so in a kind of quite sort of cavalier, extreme manner without ever getting a hair out of place. And in this movie, a, se a, a sequence of events which involves Kingsman being blown up leads us to discover that we have a sister organization who are a heightened version of sort of American culture and Americana, cowboys, denim clad, Stetson wearing superheroes in the same way that we're these, this riff on English gentlemen. Yeah. Neither are particularly realistic, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, and it's, an, it's a kind of an idea that I think people the world over can buy into because it, it, it's stereotypes and it's quite fun to play with. But people who have seen the first film might be surprised that Colin Firth is in it at all. <laughs> yes, they Because might. he was quite clearly killed. He was. And he's back. I think it was very clear very early on that one of the things that people really, really loved about the first movie was one, seeing Colin Firth in this incredibly unlikely role of the superhero, crime-fighting, badass ninja guy. Um, and also, I believe as well, I think that what people bought into, as well as all the hype and action and craziness, was, I think, that relationship between Harry and Exit. I think that's kind of the heart of the film. The most emotionally affecting moments of the first one involved those two characters. And so I think that Matthew recognised and felt strongly that in order to continue the success, that Colin was presumably essential to the future of, of the story and the franchise. So, so he has to live. 
he has to live. He has to live. And so within the parameters of the film, Matthew felt that he could conceivably bring him back. And I personally feel, I'll leave that to other people to, and Mark to evaluate whether they feel that that's far-fetched or not. I believe it really works and I believe it's to the sort of betterment of the film. And the Matthew you're referring to is of course Matthew Vaughan yes. who's, uh, who's directed this movie as well. Yes. It, how does he direct you? What's it like being on set with him? How does he direct the scenes? I found it's changed a lot over the two movies particularly on when it came to me. I think he felt more like he had to manage me a little bit and since then I, we, we also did a movie called Eddie the Eagle together which he produced and Dexter Fletcher directed. So we've kind of worked together constantly in some capacity over the past four years and our relationships really developed and changed. In terms of him on set, he's very enthusiastic and very excited, but also sort of not in the room a lot of the time in the sense that he's in his, his head. You can see he there's a face Matthew has where he sort of goes to his faraway place and dreams up these crazy ideas that, you know, only people like Matthew Vaughan or... Quentin Tarantino or dream up these, these things that wouldn't occur to normal people. It's hard work, it's a very long shoot and the level of detail and camera work that goes into it is massive. Uh, Matthew, I guess you might say overshoots to give himself lots of options in the edit and I think it's in the edit when he has this real palette of things that he's built, that's where he's able to splice and create what he wants to create. I'm guessing, I, I, I don't presume to be able to demystify Matthew. But, um. And it's a very physical movie. I imagine it's pretty exhausting. M massively so, yeah. But thrilling as well and very exciting, you know, to, uh, it's like a little boy's dream, really running around in these suits pretending to be something akin to superheroes. I, th I think in the first film, you said that the most exhausting sequence was the underwater sequence. Yes. And uh, which took, although it was just like five minutes of the film, it was like 10 days. 10 days of, of shooting, yeah. What, in this movie, it starts with a, a fairly exhausting sequence with you in a taxi. That's right. Would that have been the... I would think that would be pretty exhausting. That was, up, that was up there. I actually have another underwater sequence in this film, and this time it's an extension of the sequence you just referred to. I'm underwater again, but this time I'm sat in a taxi and seat belted in. And it's quite a strange and quite scary experience. You sort of sit on a stage above water level and you sit in the taxi with the seat belt on and they give you a regulator and then they submerge you into the water and on an underwater speaker they give you a moment to prepare and then they start shooting and you're essentially strapped in, you know, if you started drowning. I mean, there's a, there's a team of people there to save you, but it's still quite scary. That's nonetheless. Quite reassuring. But it yeah. sounds that you're pushed to your limits. Yes, I would say that's fair enough. And Matthew was very, very keen on um, trying to get us to do anything that's physically possible or doesn't kind of go against insurance. So a lot of what you see, I would say most of what you see is, is actually me and, and, and Colin, which is great. And it's something that people find very thrilling about the film, I think. And you referred to the first film uh, as a big art house movie. I feel it is. And th is this the same? Yes, I think it is. I think if anything, Matthew has taken even more license to express his idea of what a movie, a big kind of studio level, potentially very commercial movie can be. I think he makes movies in quite an unusual way in that they're actually financed privately by Matthew, which gives him, I think, the final say and license to do exactly as he sees fit, which is why there are moments in the movie that for some people... They feel like they may go a little bit too far, but I think he delights in being provocative and I think a huge portion of his audience delight in it as well. But yes, I think it's an art house movie in the sense that it's auteured. And I think there is something unique to the way he makes a film, whether you like it or not. And speaking of going too far, uh, as you referenced it, Mark uh, enjoyed the first movie. Uh, he made a reference to what he called leering laddish humour. Mm. Uh, close. This is the last movie. Yes. Closing on what he called an unforgivable bum note. Yes, uh, which is very well put. Would you say that that tone uh, continues in this film? It's downplayed. It's they turned it up. How would you? Describe uh, it? I, I'd say there's an there's an there's an equivalent moment which I think will upset people in the same way, and it, it really divides people. For some people, it's kind of shocking and attention grabbing and harmless fun and for some people it's um, offensive and unnecessary and you know some people say it lowers the tone of the film I, for my part I really don't have a massive opinion on it those aren't the moments in the film that make me excited and make me love it because I do love the films I think it's supposed to be taken in in a sort of light-hearted way but you understand why people some people clearly absolutely absolutely and uh, and also I uh, you know for my own part to sort of <laughs> protect myself a little bit they aren't days on set I enter in too lightly. But I have faith in Matthew and I, I'm, I'm only where I am because of him. Do you get to keep the suits? I think I could if I asked. 
But um, once you've spent six months sweating and running oh, around in them and having sand all over them, I'm quite, you're quite glad to see the back of them. You get terrible neck crash as well from those starch collars. So tough. Yeah. <laughs> I know, so hard. First of all problems. Do you know what this film has in common with Logan Lucky, which is out at the moment, Alien Covenant, which came out a few months ago, and Free Fire, the Ben Wheatley film, which came out about six months ago? No, enlighten me. I have no idea. The music of John Denver. Right, I see. Unbelievably... Country roads. John Denver's music. Uh, when when it Having comes something up in of this, a resurgence, think it's quite astonishing. I mean, he's been gone for a long time. It's very much a kind of a seventies thing. And then when Free Fire had Annie's song, and then Alien Covenant has Take Me Home, Country Roads, and Logan Lucky does the same thing. And now it turns up in your film as well. What do you what do you attribute that to? I, I have no absolutely idea. no idea. Maybe every, presumably it's coincidence. But Mark Strong singing John Denver. What's not to like? No, it's a great moment. And Mark sings it brilliantly as well. That's, he's got a great voice. He's got a great voice. There are no end to Mark's skills. Yeah, that's a, I really love that moment in the film, and I don't want to no. spoil anything about it, but um, I think it's one of my sort of favourite moments in the film. I love Kingsman when it, when it kind of it's emotionally affecting, as I believe it is at times, and, um, and that's one of the moments where I think you can get a bit caught up in it. So you've had an incredibly busy time since your first movie, since the first one, Eddie the Eagle, uh, legend, testament of youth, sing, so you can sing. You, you and Mark could have a good sing-off. A sing-off, perhaps, yeah. I, I have always um, enjoyed singing, but it's it's only in the past kind of couple of years that it's something that I've actively pursued. Uh, I'd love to do a musical. Sing was a really fun experience, it was really great. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Did you get a chance to perform that to the cast? Uh, no, not on not on this set. I did have a conversation with Elton recently about it, though, and, and gained his seal of approval, which was very reassuring. Excellent. And just tell us, if you can, anything about Robin Hood, which I think is coming next. Yes. Have yeah. You I've, or have you done it? Or? Uh, we've, we're done. I'm very, very excited about it. It's helmed by Otto Bathurst, who was made famous by uh, the series Peaky Blinders. And tonally, it has something of that atmosphere to it. It's set in the period but with a kind with elements of modernity um you know i guess probably 1300s but with elements of industry and ironwork and it's a very specific world with great design and and yes as i say elements of stuff that feels like it could be 20th century and in terms of the tone of it it's very dark but it's myself and jamie fox in the two lead roles so it's quite I think it, which we've tried to make it quite witty and engaging and accessible to a, to a wide audience. I'm really, really excited about it. I saw some of it recently. It's very different. It won't be an R-rated movie, but um, it's quite an, it was quite a different and a very enjoyable experience to Kingsman. But I'm, I'm hoping for great things for it. Tarrant, a, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much, much indeed. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, mate.